Let's make some modifications to the previous example in which we created a while loop. We're going to make some modifications to this while loop to allow us to investigate the behavior of the shift register. In order to create a shift register, we right-click on the edge of a loop. Notice how in the context menu we have the option to add shift register. When we create a shift register, automatically two terminals are created, one on the left side and one on the right side. The left side terminal gives us the value from the previous iteration. The right side terminal is where we store the value which we wish to retrieve in the following iteration. What I wish to do in this example is detach the loop iteration indicator. Modify this code so that it takes the previous value in the shift register and adds 5 to it. In order to do that, let's first delete our loop iteration indicator from the previous example. Make a little bit of room here so we'll move the time delay out of the way. So we're going to place down from the numeric palette the add function. We want to create a numeric constant from, again from the numeric palette of 5. We want to add to the previous iteration the number 5. So as I mentioned it's the left side shift register terminal which gives out the value from the previous iteration. Notice how we've hooked this up but we have a broken wire and when we hover over that wire the context help tells us that the type of the source is void. Shift registers are polymorphic. What that means is that they conform to whatever type of data is wired into it. At this stage we have not yet told the shift register what type of data it holds. However, once we connect the output of the add function to the right side of the shift register, we'll immediately see that our void type has gone and we get a blue wire indicating that we have an integer being represented along that wire. The reason that that was properly determined is because the output of the add function with an integer input is also an integer. So the behavior we now have is we have our previous iteration value having 5 added to it. That result then goes and gets stored by being placed into the right side shift register and the next time through the loop it will come out this side. Now you may ask the question, what is the value the first time a loop runs? Now, that's a very important question and it's a very important point for shift registers. The first time a loop runs, the value you might say is indeterminate. LabVIEW provides the ability to solve this problem by allowing you to wire into the left side of the left shift register terminal before a loop runs. If I right click and do create constant here, notice how it automatically creates an integer data type constant and it allows me to enter in the value 0. This value allows me to initialize the shift register. Now, uninitialized shift registers have a very interesting and important behavior as well, and that's something we'll be talking about much later. Before we run this example, let's create a numeric indicator on the output side of the add function so that we can watch on the front panel the execution of our code. We'll turn on highlight execution and we'll watch this run. So notice how the first time through the loop, the value is 0. Then 5 gets added and indicated on our output. And then the next time through the loop, we have 5 come out the left side. And as the loops continue to iterate, we see that value continually increasing by 5. So if we turn off our highlight execution button, and we run it, we see the system running, uh, incrementing by 5 every half a second. There's another important feature of shift registers, and that is that the left side terminal can be expanded down. What this allows us to do is see the value from not just the previous iteration, but the one before that. To demonstrate that, let me create an indicator on the second terminal. and watch as we try to run. Notice how we get an error message. We have initialized some shift register elements but not all of them. Whenever we expand the shift register terminal in this way we must initialize all of the inputs or none of them. In this case because we have initialized the first one we must initialize both. Again we'll turn on execution highlighting and watch as this runs. 
So we see how our x plus y output has a 5 and our numeric has a 0. And the next time through the loop, we see how the numeric output is always one step behind the other. This left side terminal can be expanded down to as many terminals as required.